Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek. Today I'm going to go over some of the issues that a lot of people run into when they're starting to get into motherboard work, specifically on what happens when you overheat a board. And we're going to go over some of the things that you need to do to correct for this. So let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at an iPhone that someone tried to replace the NAND on. In doing so, they overheated that section of the board, but on the back side of that board sits the PMIC. Now the PMIC is obviously crucial because it supplies power to everything. It is surrounded by components that makes it tricky to work on, and it is also encapsulated under and on its side by underfill which is one of the reasons why it can overheat in the first place. If this section of the board is heated too much, the solder will start to melt. And as it does, it expands. The underfill prevents the chip from moving, and so the solder starts to squeeze out from all sides, creating cold joints and or shorting under the IC, which means the only solution is to remove it and either replace it or potentially reball the IC and put it back. After carefully using hot air around 300 degrees Celsius to go around the perimeter of the PMIC, scraping up the underfill down to the board to prevent the components from lifting, you'll then need to come in carefully and pop it off. The PMIC being surrounded by so many small components makes it really tricky to lift, so there's no real optimal area to insert the tool while heating up the IC to pull it off. And in doing so, a lot of the times, components get knocked around, which can make for a really annoying time trying to put them back, as it tends to create a domino effect, whereas if you bump the component too much in one direction, it'll bump into another, which will bump into another, which will bump into another, creating a cascading domino effect that turns into a nightmare. That being said, with enough patience, all of this can be corrected, and one of the things that you need to focus on as well is prepping the motherboard to receive the new IC or rebald IC. The easiest way to do this is to add low melt solder, like a 138 solder, to all of the solder joints on the motherboard. The solder will mix, creating a lower melting point from the factory solder so that it's easier to wick. In this case, most of the underfill that was under the IC stayed on the actual IC itself. So the only thing we have to contend with is the perimeter, making sure that the underfill around the perimeter of where the IC is going to go is clear, all the way from corner to corner. Using PCB cleaner or even isopropyl alcohol with a brush and a microfiber cloth, you'll be able to clean up any of the flux residue to leave you with a nice clean surface that the IC can be soldered to. And then you want to take the time to realign any components that you gave up on earlier, such as these capacitors. The easiest way to do this is with some hot air and tweezers, or if you have soldering tweezers, those will work as well. And if you get frustrated with a single capacitor, you can always leave it for another time. Just don't forget about it. Moving on to the IC itself. If you're going to reball it, you'll need to clear away the underfill, if any and replace all of the solder. So again, taking some low melt is gonna help in this process by mixing it with the factory solder. And what I like to do is take the iron tip, which is a chisel blade, and carefully skate across the surface of the IC, removing the underfill. If you, if you push too hard, you might end up scratching the surface of the IC, in which case you will definitely need to replace it as it will no longer be something that is I'm going to take the time to thoroughly remove all of the solder and all of the underfill so that I can have an easier time reballing it. Now with ICs such as the PMIC, one of the things that I like to do is use a higher, higher melting temperature solder like a 183. You could even go up to a 217 if you really wanted to, but I found 183 is just fine for me. But let's go over some of the common issues or common failures those that are just getting started as you let's say i'm going to take the solder paste without drawing it out let me show you what happens let me show you what can happen if you use the solder paste without properly drying it out 
Now the solder paste isn't thoroughly dried as you go over it with the hot air. Given that the stencil does warp here and there, what will happen is the solder will start to move around too much and it will form under the, and it will slip under the stencil and combine with surrounding solder paste, causing the reball to not be uniform. And when you notice this, there's two ways to go about fixing this. Either start all over and wick everything off and re, and re, and re ball it, or you can go this other method, which definitely works, but it can potentially take longer than it would be to reball it. It's pretty straightforward. It simply involves adding more solder paste to the stencil and then shaving off the top of the solder wall in the stencil because the solder paste, as it becomes a sphere, part of that will stick above the stencil and you can shave that off with a nice sharp razor blade. And as you do this over and over and over, you will start to even out the, even out the solder balls across the grid array. And although it may take a little bit longer, you still end up with a nice result. In order to install the IC, you'll want to make sure that there's enough flux covering the solder pads on the motherboard so that you don't oxidize any of them while heating it up. And you'll also want to make sure the IC has some flux on it as well to keep the solder balls from oxidizing while it heats up as well. You don't want there to be too much, otherwise you'll cause a floating action where the IC won't actually be able to touch the surface so that just so that's really something that just comes with experience and now would be the time to try to correct for any of the components that are still not lined up perfectly and you'll find that when you heat up and place the actual IC itself sometimes they they correct themselves you'll want to make sure you have the orientation of the IC in the in the correct position and when you get it up to temperature you'll be able to nudge the IC gently to make sure it snaps into place and at the same time making sure that any components that are still out of whack get snapped into place. So those are just some of the tips and tricks that I have for you when it comes to reballing a larger IC like this. If you have any tips and tricks for doing this, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. Hopefully today I was able to impart some of my knowledge so that you guys can learn and grow from this. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.